Um, so I was at the Santa Monica show last night. Um, Can you call it a show? I'm gonna call it a show because it lasted about an hour. That was way longer than I wanted it to last, by the way. <laughs> I did not expect that. So. Well, there was a lot of requests. It was, yeah. and none of them. I don't think I fulfilled any requests other than no, like you I did. tried. You did actually. You did um, what goes around, and people have been. That's the one that people have been like talking about in the blog. I tried to do that. It was pretty good. You got like a good verse and chorus. Verse and chorus. That's it. And then I started talking, singing about Scarlett Johansson. It didn't make any sense at all. Um, but what was sort of your your thought process there about having the show? Did you sort of think about it, or was it spur of the moment? I was kind of bored. You know, I was just like, but well, sometimes I feel like I should be playing more. Sometimes, you know. And so I was like, why don't I just go to the pier and play some songs and play some new stuff? And, why not? And then all the fans. So it, was, uh, it wasn't super thought out, but it was kind of thought out throughout the day. But not really. And it was too bad that the police shut you down in the middle of that song, because I know the fans are pretty excited about hearing that in fall. Um, I will definitely play that at some point somewhere down the road. But uh, yeah, I really, it was, that song was kind of an afterthought after the record, and so I wanted, I don't, I don't know, I like the song, and so I wanted people to hear it. Yeah. It will, it will be it will be heard at some point, whether it's like produced for something or I don't know. Maybe it'll be like shut that door where you sort of evolved it while you were doing performances. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, I feel like it's done, but you never know. Yeah. Um, going uh, back to the album, was there any particular musical influences that you were thinking of as you were making the album? Um. Not particularly. I feel like the uh, the biggest thing that like I listen to while I'm making a record is I listen to the people that I really like, and that's the Beatles and Michael Jackson. I mean, those are like staples that I go to. Um, but I wasn't like I want to sound. I want this record to sound like this song. It was just kind of like the songs kind of have the a mind of their own, and like they turn into whatever. And I wasn't trying to to, to model them after anything else. Emulate anybody? You just yeah. So yourself. hopefully it comes off that way, and and uh, it's like, oh well, that's. I don't think that the record has like a who this is Chris's sound. I just think that they're songs and they're good. Uh, you tweeted recently about seeing Springsteen and how it was like had a major impact on you. It was one of the best concerts you've seen. Can you tell me a little bit more about the concert? Oh, um, it was um, it was mind blowing to be honest with you. I've been telling people that Bruce Springsteen. This is my this is my idea of Bruce Springsteen after the show. Is that he is some kind of rebel rock preacher that doesn't care about anything other than like like he almost, he has like a connection with God and he has a connection with like his congregation as a rebel preacher but he is pissed at his deacons like he is mad which is the government <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is my that was my like idea throughout I kept getting that idea throughout the concert and other than that like he wasn't like another thing I've been saying is like he he wasn't like singing to you. He wasn't like singing. This is my song to you. It was like I'm gonna sing this song, and you're gonna think it's about you. And it's like, and he, he just didn't. I don't know. I thought it was so. It was kind of a spiritual experience. Like I laughed at points because he's so good. Like his voice is insane at 62, and he has so much energy. I like cried at one point. Like, why did I cry? I started like thinking about my dad, and I was like, Ugh, why am I crying? But I don't know. It was like, I'm completely honest. Like that was the best show I've ever been to. I have been to a lot of cool shows, um, but that one was like, that one like hit me like emotionally in a way. I don't know all the songs. I couldn't like sing all the songs to you, but um, just something about this. This show that was very genuine and very, I don't know, like if I, if I wanted to be, like after going to a show, if I was to be like, I want to be a performer like this person, question mark, I would have to say Bruce Springsteen right now. Is there any, are there any other, do you, sometimes do you go to shows and like, um, do you find, do you find yourself thinking, oh I want to do that, or oh, I want to do that, or sometimes, is it, does it hard to just enjoy a show? Or... Um, no, I mean it's, uh, 
I definitely like am thinking in the back of my head uh, I could do that and some obviously don't want to steal things but um, yeah, I went to the I went to the Gautier show the other day too and it was and it was awesome I mean he does some really cool things with instruments and uh, you know a lot of different sounds with computers and stuff like that so um, you know it's I'm always I feel like I'm always being inspired by by shows I, I growing up I didn't go to a lot of shows there wasn't a lot of shows going on back home but um, so now I feel like I'm able to do that kind of stuff and it's it's inspiring. It inspires music. Inspires my music. It inspires my shows and what I want them to be. Right. Speaking of shows, um, do you guys have like a timeline set up to when you're thinking about getting on the road, um, or are you more just thinking about more one-off shows like the Petapalooza one? We're doing a lot of radio stuff right now, um, but the hope is the hope is that we get on on the road in the summer and and do some tour dates and like you know play like a real show you know because I I love doing that stuff and I love putting together a show and it's a it's a lot of fun for me so and I love getting the, the whole band involved those guys are those guys are my family and so I, I want to get them involved a little bit more and and uh, and I think we all have a great chemistry together and so and I know the fan, I know that you guys love those guys too so yeah. um, I, w- I want to get on the road with them it's just fun like it, it, there's never any drama and and uh, I, I love being out on the road like I want to spend like a month on a bus or two months on a bus and and you know go out on tour so hopefully we can work that stuff out yeah and you guys have kind of had a re- reunion of sorts in the last couple weeks so you guys have been doing lots of practicing and uh, how have those been going great we did I mean the uh, we did some full band rehearsals but they were just for the for the idol performance so we went over some other songs too it was kind of it was like you can only play with them. Vision Love so many times and they were like let's play something else and so I was showing them all the new stuff and, uh, and so we would go over a little bit and you know oh, oh tomato do you have any hot sauce? no just, uh, just hot sauce thank you oh one second there we go I can eat uh, eggs. I can eat eggs all day, every day. Love Breakfast it. is the best meal of the day. It absolutely is. Um, but I can't wait to actually, like, thank you, man. Get on the road and, like, play songs and, like, rehearse with those guys. We haven't, like, really done a, a band rehearsal, but I've been rehearsing with Torres and K.O. down in San Diego. And that's always fun. So, so much fun. And San Diego's like, beautiful. Not San Diego. Carlsbad. San Diego adjacent. Yeah. I feel like um, I'm a local there now. Uh, going back to the album, um, of the songs that made the cut of the album, which is the one that took you, if you can remember, which is the one that took you the shortest to write, it just sort of like came out, and which is the one that took you the longest? Probably the shortest one would be My Weakness. It was one of those, it was seriously one of those songs that like I wrote, and I was like, I'm never going to hear this song again. And... Um, and then it kind of like started taking form in production and and then it almost became like one of like everyone else's favorites and I was like really this is a song that like just came out in like five minutes and uh, and so so for me like when I don't spend a lot of time with the song it's almost like hard to fall in love with it um, but now that like I've listened to this song a bunch I'm like falling in love with it which is great and, but the song that probably took the longest was Monster. I, I started writing that song right after the last one. Right after. And uh, me, me and Kale started writing it together. He actually had the chord progression, and, uh, and I just started singing something over it. And it's kind of taken a million different shapes and forms um, in a good way. And we moved different things around. Like the bridge used to be the pre chorus at one point. And then the, the pre-chorus was the bridge. It was, it's kind of crazy. So um, it's amazing how a song can, you know, even we had a, 
like at a good spot and then we went into produce it with Kurt and he was like, well, what if you change this? And so it's like, it's that song is like always changing. So, but it's uh, glad it's at a point where it feels really good. Yeah, I, I love Monster. Cool. I think it's a great song. Cool, thank you. Um, is there any, it's so hard talking about the album. You talked about how Monster started out one way and sort of came out another. When you're going into the album, did you have like a conception or idea? Or was it something that like you kind of shaped as it was going? Um, it was probably like it's shaped as it going. I think in my head I wanted it to be like I'm gonna get in this in the studio with like this one guy. Like we're gonna make this record. and It's gonna be like this. Um, over time it, it turned into not that. It turned into something else. And and um, and I'm I'm grateful that I was working to be able to work with different producers just because it was a, a fun experience. I got great people too. Like Kurt's great. Tim Pagnotta's amazing. I had so much fun with him. And and, uh, and the other guys in the record, so it was fun. Um, how difficult was the, al the album selection process? Is there any songs that like you knew immediately were definitely going to go on the album, and were there some songs that sort of you had to winnow it down a little? Um, uh I feel like there was only a group of, at least for me anyways, there was a group of like 13 or 14, maybe 15, that I was like, maybe these can end up on the record. And um, so it wasn't super hard cutting down from like 15. Now, I mean, I wrote like 60 songs for this record. But those like 15 are the ones that stuck out. And so cutting one or two out of those, you know, Turn the pages and fighters ended up on the on the lux record, so you didn't have to. I didn't have to like cut those out. They ended up on something. Um, there's probably one or two that I was like, man, I wish we could do something with this, but it just didn't fit. Like the production maybe didn't work as well as I wanted it to, or, or maybe it didn't. It was a song that maybe just didn't fit with the record. It felt like a little bit too bluesy or something. And so um, at the end of the day, I felt like it was pretty easy to like to cut it down to these are the songs that I love I'm happy about these I'm proud of these and everyone else seemed to be in the same uh, same boat as I was like I'm like here label this is the songs that I like what do you think do you like these two and they're like yeah it's great so it was it was cool Song in Nashville, and um, we're a pretty, it's, uh, this girl named Megan Kabir, really young, awesome, awesome, really good lyricist, great singer, and uh, in Tebe too, which I wrote another song that didn't end up on the record, and um, we started like, I mean, it starts like every time I think, like we were in this big studio, I was playing the piano, she was playing the guitar, she had, she came up with like the very first thing on the, uh, the guitar riff at the beginning, she was like, I got this idea, maybe we can pull something from that, and so we kind of just did, we started like coming up with melodies and, and lyrics, and um, there wasn't a, uh, it wasn't like an initial inspiration for the song. It wasn't like, I'm going through this, let's write a song about it. It's more just, when, it, when it's a song like that, it's more just like a general, um, the gathering of everyone together and, and, and kind of a general idea of, you know, let's, let's fight for this. It's, uh, you, know, you don't have to be going through this stuff alone. You know. Just a couple more. Yeah. Um, is it, you know, when you, I remember when you first debuted Paranoid Android, you talked about how that was a song in particular as you were growing up, you really remember liking. Are there any other songs that you can remember thinking, yeah, that song's great, um, that, that stick with you today? Um, when, I, when I think about, like, records when I was growing up, um, the Wallflowers record was, like, so, I remember that was like the first, I mean, I guess it's a rock record, but like a rock, a rock pop record that like one of the first one of those types of records that I listened to. Because I used to listen, I mean, before that stuff I was like all R&B, all like 
so for real and, and like voice to men and all that kind of stuff. So I felt like that record kind of transitioned me into oh, this is like a different kind of thing and I actually kind of dig it. Yeah. And so um, one headlight, like, whoa, great, real serious, like, Six Avenue Heartache. I love that record so much, and so it's, uh, I think about that record a lot, actually. Um, I, listening to the radio, do you ever, like, hear a song and think, oh, I wish I wrote that? Is there any song in particular that you've been, like, really jamming on recently? Um, my new favorite song is the Usher song. I freaking love that song. Um, I love that it's called Climax and it's not about sex. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I, I don't... Th I mean, maybe kind of. Like, just a little bit. You know, it's like implied, but it's not like just a dirty R&B song. You know, it's like... There's some... And I just... I love it. I think it's great. Like, every time it comes on, I kind of freak out. Yeah. I don't... It doesn't happen a lot for most songs, but... I, and I'm glad that Usher like is doing what Usher does well. It's like he sings great, and he like you see the video it doesn't make any freaking sense, but he's like really into it, and I love that about it. It's cool. Um, I don't know how much time you've had to spend at home in Arkansas. None. Um, but is, uh, I know you've got a new house. Is there anything in particular that you love about your house? Um, and in particular, is there anything Zora loves about the new house? I think Zora hates the house, actually. <laughs> we don't have any carpet in our house. And uh, he hates our floors. So that's, uh, I don't think he likes that very much. But um, the favorite, I mean, for us, like moving into a new house was so cool because we lived in apartments our whole life. We like shared a washer and dryer. Bless you. Um, we didn't have a garage, so like for us, it was all the little things. I think you're pretty sick. It was um, getting a, having a garage, having a washer and dryer. We have like a front porch. Just, we're kind of stoked about all the little things. Yeah. You know, and having walls. We didn't have walls before. We had a loft, oh, so it was like yeah. we didn't have a bedroom. Yep. Now we have three of them. Uh, just one more question. Yeah. Um, at Little Ponds, we have a thing called Question of the Week, um, where we like will ask questions. An example of that was before the the Vision of Love video came out, we asked people what they what they thought the video might be look like, and sort of you know specific questions. And um, I want to know if you had any particular questions that you, you want us to to pose. We're running out of ideas, to be honest. Not to put you on the spot. You're asking me to put. You're asking me for a question about myself. It doesn't have to be about yourself. Sometimes we ask questions like, "What's your favorite?" Like sometimes we just ask, "Like, what was your favorite concert growing up?" Or like stuff about music right, in yeah. general. Um. What? What is a song? What is the first song that you listened to and cried? What is the first song you listened to? That's a good one. All right, we're going to pose that question. It's going to be a Chris Allen approved question of the week. And, um, bam. Are bam. No. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. And, uh, yeah. Great.